All right, so the Houston Astros are the 2022 world champions. They beat the Philadelphia Phillies four games to two in Houston. The season is officially over. Now starts the fun stuff, the MLB hot stove. Next five days, Sunday through Thursday, okay, or today through Thursday, um, the exclusive signing period for agency. So teams can bring back their own players who are free agents, okay? After that, through Thursday, after that, after that floodgates open. Teams can negotiate with other te- uh, players. Judge can negotiate with teams in the, in the American League and nationally, whoever he wants, and so can everybody else. So I'm hoping that our home teams will do something. And I've said this a million times, like with the Yankees, I would think it's a really good idea if they want to bring back any of these guys to do it immediately. Do it quickly. Do not wait out the market, okay? Don't let somebody come in and then put some big offer and then the Yankees have to add $40 million to it and then put themselves in a position where they're massively overpaying for somebody when they probably don't have to. Okay, put forth your best good faith offer immediately for Andrew Benatendi, or if you're going to bring back Judge, put your best offer out immediately. He's probably going to be the one to shop it, as is his right to do, because he's probably the number one free agent on the market, and so he he's probably going to shop that offer. But if they want to bring back Andrew Benatendi, I would do it immediately. Okay, that's it, and um, and then start to plot out their plan. Or they should have their plan plotted out already, and then try to make some immediate moves once the free agency market opens altogether. That way other teams can overreact to their signings instead of the other way around, okay? I've said this too. Yankees have done it far too many times. They've overreacted and made stupid moves where they don't have to do that, okay? And we already know they have 100 plus million coming off the books and now the the hot stove is going to begin. So now things are going to get crazy. Now that, and, and since the CBA has been settled, um, there's a better platform and a better plan that everybody knows. They know exactly what the parameters are everywhere. The qualifying offer is back, okay? So they know exactly what they need to do to sign players. So I expect a lot more activity before the winter meetings and after the winter meetings. Generally, things don't really pick up until the winter meetings start, and then they start to get nuts. I think it's going to be a steady flow throughout this whole entire winter. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, do that right now, please, okay? And if you want to know when the videos come out, breaking news of all kinds hit that notification bell you'll know immediately okay within the next couple of days i've got my i'm going to be going live with several other channels ball cap sports and yy recaps and yankees morning brew we're going to be doing our mlb free agent predictions it's going to be live you're going to get all of our predictions okay from all four of us and you'll be able to interact give us your predictions and all that stuff so that's going to be a live interactive video that's going to be really 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 cool so I hope you're ready for that. I'll put the notification bell out. That's going to be premiered. So you'll know exactly when that video is most likely going to be Friday night of this coming week. So, but now I want to go to I'll go over two players, two internal options that could be internal upgrades over Josh Donaldson. Okay. A guy that pretty much everybody wants the Yankees to move on from. Okay. These to me are two obvious internal upgrades. Number one, Andre Straparo. Right now he's in AAA, 296 batting average. He's got 20 home runs. 55 ribbies, um, OPS of 962. He's got a 967 fielding percentage as well. So he's one of the better bats and a bigger home run threat from the third base position. And he's young too. So he could be an upgrade over uh, Josh Donaldson. And again, I know know they're going to try to move him, but the only way I see it happen is if they eat probably half his contract and add a good prospect, maybe a prospect between like 8 and 15 on this team. And so there's a lot of good guys they can add. And I think that's the only way they're going to be able to accomplish this. And the same goes for Hicks. The only way they're going to accomplish this, eat a bunch of the contract and add a prospect. Keep it moving. That's it. Just get them off the payroll, get them off the roster, and get two new guys in here, whether it's new guys or whatever. Okay? But that's one. And number two is IKF. Okay? He played out of position at shortstop. But just just for some perspective purposes, okay, he did make 15 errors this year, which is high. But he also had 16 defensive run saves, run saves. So, and and this is what happens, in, especially with New York. His errors get magnified a hell of a lot more than his good plays do. So it looks like he's an error machine. Now, 16, 15 errors is not a little, okay. But he also had 19 outs above average, okay. That's good as well. Those are some of the good parts of his stats. Not a sexy hitter, about a 260 plus hitter, but he was the second best Yankee. Um, in terms of hitting with runners in scoring position. He was also number two in baseball in terms of contact hitting rate, 
okay? He has like a 95% contact hitting rate. So, And it's not only getting base hits, it's putting the ball in play. Whether you're flying out or hitting a ground ball and moving guys over, he does all these little things that are not necessarily adding up to the stat sheet. He's done those things as well. But he's an obvious in-house replacement who's $20 million a year cheaper than Josh Donaldson. And then Trapar was still in the minor. So you've got six years of control, three pre-arb, three arb for that as well. So if you want a young guy, you have that too. Or if you want to go the free agent route, you have Carlos Correa. You've got Trey Turner. They can play multiple positions in the infield. Correa has shown willingness, but they're both going to cost a boatload of money. Boatload. So those to me seem to be the most logical free agent guys, but we have two in-house, two in-house guys as well. You also have Oswald, Oswaldo Cabrera who can play multiple positions. I think he'd be best at used as a kind of utility guy, a multi-positional guy. So, but Traparo and IKF seem to be the internal upgrades in my opinion. And again, IKF doesn't have the power potential of a Donaldson, but again, contact hitter, okay? And he's, he's better at runners and scoring position. He's not just sitting around waiting for the damn home run. And he's a much better defender at third base than he has at shortstop. He's an elite defender at third base, as is Donaldson. So, but those are my two internal replacements in-house and two guys in free agency for, for JD, okay? Let me know what you think. Give me your feedback in the comments. And this hot stove is going to start rolling every day. You're going to get something all on a regular basis. And we'll be going live as well at some point too. So talk to you guys later. Hope you know it.